you know, talk about a question that has probably been asked more in the last, I would say, year than than any other question. And it's difficult to decide what will the Supreme Court do? Will the Supreme Court be apolitical? Will they do what's best based on the Constitution of the United States and the letter of the law? Or will personal politics come into play? And I think a good judge, a jurist with prudence, will side and err on the Constitution, but also listen to what the constituents and other jurists say. And if you look at most court decisions, they usually reference other cases, other precedent, and also the people sitting alongside them to base their decision on. And in this, you have to decide, is Donald Trump an officer of the United States? Was he charged with insurrection? And when you look at the reserve powers of the states, the problem with that language is that it's pluralized. And it makes it sound like it's the reserve power of the states when it's truly the reserve power of the state. And each state gets to decide, based upon their constitution, what is best for them. However, this is a federal election. And if you want to talk about state legislature or dog catcher or county clerk, that is a completely different conversation. And when it comes to the president of the United States, it is a federal election, and it's based off the electoral college. And there is no other election process like it. I think the Supreme Court will rule in favor of Donald Trump in this case. He has not been charged with insurrection. It was an old underlying rule for ex-Confederate generals and military personnel to not be able to run for office, and that was because it was such a tumultuous and difficult time for the North and the South that they felt, along with the Three-Fifths Compromise, that giving the South unfettered access to policy and to the, to the politics of the United States by giving them equal representation right after a conflict would be detrimental to the health of the country in the future. To compare Donald Trump and January 6th, but there, there's no sinew of Donald Trump executing orders for an insurrection. In fact, it's absolutely the opposite if you listen to his speech truly. And take the time to listen or at least just read it. You cannot come to the conclusion that Donald Trump was calling for an insurrection. Now, the behavior leading before or after, that's, that's, that's immaterial to the conversation. Because the, the charge is that on January 6th, Donald Trump commanded people to take over the government and to perform a coup. He hasn't been charged with insurrection. Nobody's been charged with insurrection. So the argument from the Democrats and the liberals is, well, wait a second. Because he wasn't charged doesn't mean anything. They didn't charge those Confederate generals. Well, their actions were not in dispute. Military action has consequence. And it is under a completely different code of conduct than civilian law. Donald Trump most assuredly is a civilian now. When he was president of the United States, he was never in the military. He didn't make decisions based upon military rules and regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice on the battlefield in the heat of the moment with someone else commanding him to do his job, unlike Joe Biden. but specifically made those decisions based on the Constitution of the United States, the constitutionality of those decisions are prescribed in the Constitution and was executing his position as he deemed fit, as he was elected by the people of the United States and represents all 50 states. 
Donald Trump is not the president of the people. You may have given him that honorary moniker, but he is the president of the states, and that is the truest thing I can tell you. His responsibility are the governors of the states. And he executes his office in protection of these borders and the accumulated states in the union. Was there an insurrection? No. Is he an officer of the state? No. And if you want to remove Donald Trump, the simplest thing you can do is when you have the opportunity to go to the polls and vote, and both parties tell you to vote down ticket, I implore you to stop. Take a moment and identify every single person that you vote for. Are they working in the best interest of the United States? Are they working on the best interest, not only on what you consider to be the collective, but the individual? Because that is truly what is supposed to happen in a republic. The individual rights are paramount. The individual rights are the most important thing. They are the fuel, the bloodline. They are the heartbeat of this country. And the moment that we vote down ticket, assuming that because somebody puts a political party in front of their name, that they somehow are going to be beholden to our behest and the things that we want, is not only naive, it's just foolish. Donald Trump needs to be on the ballot. We need to make a decisive and clear vote for who we want to be the president of these individual states which form our country. The Supreme Court should not make that decision.